Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach. Uh, can you hear me okay, first of all? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm, just, I'm curious, how would the GM version of Derek Fisher rate the head coach version of Derek Fisher this season? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, we'll need some time, I guess, to, you know, review the season, um, you know, have the appropriate conversations as a, as a staff, um, you know, and then go from there. I mean, I don't know if rating anything or anybody really, you know, um, you know, matters at this point. Um, you know, I think we'll, we all just recognize that <clears throat> we have to come back and be better, um, you know, individually and collectively. And, you know, that's, that's where our focus is going to be. Um, appreciate our players effort, you know, um, you know, here this evening, I had a chance in the hostile environment against a, uh, a good playoff team and, um, you know, had an opportunity late in the game to, to maybe have a chance. So, um, yeah, the rating thing, I, you know, uh, that's, I guess, your guys' job. I don't really approach um, what I try to do from, from that perspective. But, uh, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, uh, we'll learn from this and we'll be better moving forward. Tukanino in LA Times. Hi, Derek. So what was the, what was the plan for that final play? What did you have drawn up for that? Um, yeah, I mean, we, it was just a variation of a similar action. We had run the out of bounds possession uh, a little bit earlier. And um, the second time just altered it a little bit. And um, yeah, we, we didn't, Execute it cleanly the the way it was uh, the way it was designed. It was a, a last little screening action there um, between Erica and Neca that wasn't as clean as it needed to be. Um, and so, you know, we ended up not necessarily getting a great look. But you know, late in the game like that, it's always going to be hard to get great looks most of the time. Um, you know, great players just have to figure out how to make a play at that point once the ball is in most of the time. But um, yeah, it was uh, it was a variation of you know, action we had run a little bit earlier in that quarter. David Yapkowitz. Yeah, we were going to go for the three if we had it, um, or you know if we and Amanda was open for a, a quick two as well, but she was kind of moving away from the basket more so than going to the rim, and I, you know Nia's eyes were on Neca for the most part, so um, yeah. That, that, that was about it. David Yapkowitz, next hoops. Hey, coach. Um, you know, even though, you know, you had your chances there at the end, um, that third quarter, I think it was, they ended it on something like a 16-4 run or something like that. You know, how much of a factor did that kind of play into how, how the outcome of the game turned out? You know, is, is this something that, you know, maybe – you finally you were with with only eight players available that you know the weight of the season and, and the injuries that you've gone through that fatigue may have played a little bit of a factor in there I mean maybe fatigue's part of sporting competitions you know so it's the players and teams that learn how to play through it and still execute um you know we had some unforced errors uh, offensively you know where we um you know made some mistakes with the ball that we didn't have to make and uh you know defensively you know, they got really, really aggressive and just driving the ball to the basket. We couldn't stay in front of people. Um, and, you know, that's that's when that that run started to happen, um, you know, at that point in the third. So, you know, but again, you're playing on the road against a playoff team, you know, in this type of game. Uh, there are going to be runs, you know, that happen. So they made their run. You know, we responded and, uh, you know, we still we still were within a possession of two you know, it would have meant it to go in the game and, um, you know, just couldn't get it done. Miriam Swanson, LA Daily News. Hey, Derek. Um, I, I, obviously, you guys, you know, gave yourself a chance to, down the stretch here the, this last week and, and even today. Um, and, and it's all very fresh, but sort of how are you guys feeling? How are you processing this? Like, you know, so how do you how do you kind of go about this right now? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously our players are disappointed. Um, you know, 
<clears throat> but we, you know, we really just try to immediately make sure that we recognize this as a learning opportunity um, that we're all going to grow from and, and get better from. Um, you know, there are a lot of reasons why we were in this position today, and it's always easy to look at the last possession in the game or the fourth quarter in the game or, you know, this one two minute stretch in the game. Um, you know, but over the, uh, this is a 32 game season. So as much as it was about today, it really wasn't about today. It was about, you know, the 31 games prior to now, uh, you know, the habits and details that you have coming into today that we have to work to improve on. So um, <clears throat> I'm hoping that's the way we're, you know, we're going to process it. And, uh, you know, we're just going to come back bigger, better and stronger. That's that's uh, that's what we talked about. That's what the plan will be. And that's what we're going to execute on. Michael Burns, Winsider. Hey, Coach. Obviously, uh, not the result we all hoped for tonight, but we saw a lot of veteran leadership and an impressive performance out of NECA tonight. Um, through so much turbulence this year, what has her leadership and her consistency meant for your group? Um, yeah, no, NECA's, you know, the, the foundation of, of where we're going and where we're headed, um, you know, we, um, you know, we recognize that and, and um, you know, I think her intestinal fortitude or her mental and physical toughness is, uh, you know, oftentimes what keeps us together. Um, she, you know, I think in a lot of ways, um, because of her ability to kind of persevere through anything and everything, she just still doesn't really get the credit and the respect that she deserves. Um, you know, again, 36, minutes and 45 seconds and no free throw attempts today. Um, and no damn way you can tell me that at no point <laughs> when she was going to the basket attempting the shot that at no point did she get touched or grabbed or hit on the arm um, that, you know, nobody can convince me of that. So, um, but you know, uh, that's NECA, right? And even though those things don't happen for her, she still finds a way to come back and be consistent and do whatever her team needs to do. Um, and you know, that's why we're building this group around her and with her and, um, you know, she's going to come back and be even better than she was this year. You know, to be honest, like her season was hijacked by the injury that happened the last time we were here in Dallas and she missed the majority of this season. Uh, so, uh, you know, for her to have a healthy off season and, uh, you know, come back strong and ready to go next year, uh, that's going to be fun to see. Last question for coach. We'll end with the in-person media there in Dallas. To piggyback off what you said about the calls, do you feel that the calls were even throughout the, throughout the uh, game? There were a lot of calls that was controversial or cooper that the crowd kind of just threw with along with a few other media. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, uh, I, officiating is subjective. It's not an easy job. Um, so, you know, and their calls missed on both sides. Uh, I'm sure there are some calls that uh, referees missed when we may have fouled somebody or done something and the whistle didn't blow. Um, you know, so that's just a part of it. Uh, you know, there were a couple calls late there in, in, in that quarter to play with the ball going out of bounds and the push was called on Sykes. There was, you know, there wasn't a push there, but that's the way we see it. Um, and, you know, I think the thing that, you know, we, we talked about again after this game is like we have to be so good that it doesn't come down to those things and that's the way we need to look at this like our season whether we win a game or not we can't leave it up to anybody else but us and and so that's the way we're going to approach this off season and uh find a way to come back and separate ourselves in a way um that doesn't allow anybody to take anything away from us because we're going to have such tight hold on it um that it'll be clear what our intentions are Thank you, coach. Thanks. Questions for NECA. We'll start with Miriam Swanson, LA Daily News. Hey, NECA. Um, it's been such a turbulent season for all you guys with injuries and just, just everything. But um, I guess at, at this point that you guys had a shot at the end, I mean, is that, <laughs> does that lift you guys at all? Or that's how are you processing this? Uh, you know, I mean, I think that um, I'm, I'm proud of how we played, most certainly. Um, but I think it's it's more about understanding 
the opportunity that we we have you know even given all things we still had a chance and for us to fight in that way i think it's definitely a mark of um the team that we want to have the organization that we want to have and so staying together and understanding that you know everything we do um in the season and in the off season is for the team michael matthew good news network Michael, are you there? We'll go to Kahari Jones, Jr., LA Sentinel. Hey, what's going on, Nekka? Um, Coach Fisher, I praise your, your, your leadership and your resiliency through all the challenges throughout the season and he, even in this game, you know. Uh, can you elaborate on just, you feel like this leadership, your, your leadership and the challenges you all went through this season set the foundation for the future? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, um, being on like what is, is like a totally different team um, from what I'm used to is is something that I had to kind of lean into. Um, I had to find a new part of myself. And then also with getting injured and um, all the national team stuff, uh, it's, it's just interesting how it all happened in the same year. Um, so I really had to dig deep into, you know, like, my worth individually and my worth on the sparks and just like as a player and a person. And I think that that really helped me understand um, what's important. And I really just want to be able to be, um, you know, that super vet for my, for my uh, teammates. Um, I, I love playing the game for the intangibles. I've said this since I entered the league. I've said this in college. Um, that's what I play for. So, um, even with the stakes tonight, how I play should never change. I, I approach every game as though it's a game that has to be won no matter what's going on. And uh, I, wanna, I wanna hopefully instill that culture in the team. And um, through the challenges that I experienced this year, I hope that I did my best to still be there for my team uh, throughout the season. Couple more tonight for NECA. We'll go to Michael Burns of Windsider. Hey, NECA. Um, obviously, not the result that you guys are all hoping for tonight, but um, couldn't help but notice uh, your amazing shooting performance this evening four for five from three. Um, had only put in seven until tonight on the season. Is that something that you're going to continue to focus on this offseason and uh, heading into next year? Um, I mean, that's something that I had worked on the 10 weeks that I was out. Um, I mean, I knew that I could shoot the three even before I got injured. And I'm just, I'm just glad that I was able to recognize what they were giving me today and uh, not fall into the trap of things not going my way initially. Uh, you know, as long as I'm out there, there's an opportunity. And I'm really grateful to have a, a coaching staff that really wants to see my game evolve. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I was also to, able to have the confidence to do that tonight. Uh, and it's, in my opinion, like me shooting that way is, it shouldn't be a surprise, but I, I guess like what is surprising is that I shot five threes and I don't typically shoot that many, but it's amongst one of the things that of course I'm gonna continue to work on in the off season. Last one for this evening, David Yapkowitz with the next. Hey, NECA. I mean, um, this team's been, you know, this was a, a fairly young team this year. Um, I think maybe, you know, uh, in the first half of the season and then maybe even a month ago, you know, after that tough road trip, you know, it may have been tough to imagine that here at the end of the year, you'd have a chance to, to get into the playoffs. Um, just with the way the group responded, you know, the win against Seattle, the win against Atlanta, you were in this game up until the very end, you know, on the road in a hostile environment. Just did you learn or what, what did you learn about this team's mental toughness and, and what you think, you know, you can, can, can carry, you know, heading, heading forward? You know, I, I think what I learned most is that we have, you know, like you said, a younger generation of players coming in and, and ultimately carrying a lot of these teams. I mean, the team we lost to today, I know they don't like talking about it, but it's amazing what they do with, um, with I guess, the less league experience than other teams. Um, they, you know, they've decided to be mature about how they play. And 
I think that's something that we can learn. Um, when everything was at stake, we saw it, like you said, we saw it these last couple of weeks. And we just have to understand that every game is at stake. And that's the maturity, that's the focus, that's the investment, that's the camaraderie that needs to be more consistent and will be. Thanks, Neka. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.